Hello everyone, today I'm sharing 10 beauty myths that women should stop believing. I know, and it's it's one of those videos where the fact checkers are gonna come out and they're gonna comment below that I'm wrong, I don't know what I'm talking about, don't listen to me. And hey, maybe they're right. Take, take all of this with a grain of salt. These are just things I've kind of come up with over the many years and I thought I would just share. So let's get started with the very first idea. And that is the myth that shaving will make your hair grow in thicker. And really the reason I'm holding this up is because this is a dermaplaning tool. And I think, you know, the idea of shaving one's face just freaks the heck out of so many people. Even though I've recommended this for so long, I still get emails. Like I literally got one two days ago uh, asking where I got this and also just, they wanted reassurance that like my face doesn't grow a beard, basically. You know, when we shave our legs, it creates a blunt tip. And so when the hair starts to grow back, it kind of does feel thicker and more coarse. So I think that's where the idea came. But there are so many studies proving that when you shave, it doesn't change the hair follicle whatsoever. It doesn't come back thicker. It doesn't come back more coarse or even change the color. So this dermaplaning tool, which I will again link down below, it is the best of the best. Please stop buying the terrible cheap ones from Amazon. Amazon, just don't. Uh, this this kind of pricey. I actually recently got some refills, so you know when this does start to get blunt, which I haven't needed to change it yet, you can get new heads. But anyway, it shaves all of the peach fuzz off of your face, so that you know it, your face is so smooth. It really removes like oh, it just if, I'm telling you, it makes your face feel like a baby's bottom. It makes your makeup application so much better and smoother. I honestly just cannot say enough good things about this thing. But I know that there's so many people terrified to use it, and I assure you, I've been using it for years. My 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 facial hair is no thicker than it was before, and I I promise I can't grow a beard. A few quick. Pre preliminary things. My tongue is super yellow for my coffee. And also none of this is sponsored. So if I mention any products, I'll link them below, but really this is all just super random. So number two, it's the myth. And oh man, this is this the, the hairdressers. I feel like I'm going to be attacked. Honestly, I'm curious. Hairdressers, people that do hair, comment below if you agree or just totally disagree with me on this. But there's a myth out there that the more you cut your hair, or if you just get regular haircuts, it will in fact, make your hair grow faster. And I just genuinely believe this is a complete and total myth. I have done both avenues where I get consistent, regular cuts and I have gray hairs. So I can tell if my hair is growing at the same speed or like I can just tell. And then I've gone where I just like never get my hair cut and I probably have a lot of split ends, um, but I've done both. And I literally see absolutely no difference in the rate my hair grows. I will say that if I get regular haircuts, it has, helps to maintain, you know, my, my ends where they're more like, it's more of a straighter edge and it, my hair probably looks healthier. Uh, but is my hair actually growing faster? No, let me know. So that leads me to number three, which is the myth that you can actually repair your hair's split ends. Like when your hair is like split in two different directions, you can just magically bond it back together and go about your merry way. That's not possible. I'm almost like a thousand percent positive that that is a complete myth. And I do want to shout out the Olaplex, uh, which this says repairs and strengthens all hair types. It's the number three hair perfecter. I do think this is liquid gold, guys. I highly recommend it. Like this stuff is really magical. And I do think it repairs the hair shaft. And I think that it, you know, really prevents the, the split ends from even happening. Um, so I, by the way, I think that w depending on when this goes live, this is on sale for the Nordstrom anniversary sale. If you're interested, I can link it below. Maybe it's sold out. I don't know. It's also on Amazon. Um, but I wanted to say that if you think that's going to actually repair the split ends that are already there, it's not going to happen. And you probably should schedule that hair appointment for a little snippy snippy. The next myth, which this is the last myth about hair and then we're moving on. But there's a myth out there that if you have a gray hair and you pluck it, it will grow back three or four more additional gray hairs. Just a complete myth. Again, I know because I have many gray hairs. I've had them since high school. It really hasn't gotten worse. It hasn't gotten better. They're just there in the same exact spot. And I have plucked the heck out of them and the same ones grow back in its place. It doesn't get worse. It doesn't get better. And, and I, I've researched it a little bit. I'm pretty sure that, you know, the, the cell follicle kind of just like dies. And so it just grows back white or like basically no pigment. And then obviously more and more of that happens as we age. And so that's why it does get worse and worse. So I'm sure my time is coming. Pluck away if you really want to, but but I just, I use this. Oh yes. Um, I'm actually completely, totally out. So if you see some peeking through, that's why. But this magic root cover up, 
man, it is magic. Um, or you could just dye your hair. I do that every like two to three months. The next myth is the idea that oily skin is bad. Ugh, we don't want oily skin. We don't want a shiny face. We want oil control. We want to buy all these products. And, and I'm just here to say that I really think that we should be embracing our shiny faces and our oily skin. And I totally agree that too much oil production can lead to breakouts, but I think, I think that's honestly a little bit more dramatic sometimes. Um, you know, I don't really have any, you know, acne breakouts anymore, and but, but my skin is oily, but I ha it's natural oils. And, I, and I've been told by multiple professionals, like skin professionals, that I should embrace my oily skin because in the long run, I'm gonna have far less fine lines and wrinkles on my face because it's naturally hydrated with my own facial oils. Whereas people with very, very dry skin, their skin is just constantly, you know, dry, which leads to the fine lines and wrinkles and more of an aging process. So I'm just here to say, if you do have oily skin, let's embrace it more. Let's just embrace that glow. So that does lead me to the next myth, which I actually hear very often, like even in commercials, and that is to exfoliate on a daily basis. And, and this is kind of personal, like if you feel like you really need to and you enjoy it, okay. Um, but I just have found that there's not many products that I can use on a daily basis and it be a good thing. Like it really does strip my face from my natural, my natural oils. I think it can honestly like tear our face a little bit and cause a little bit of damage and not like visible damage, but like microscopic damage, probably not ideal. So I think using them like once a week, maybe even once every few weeks is great. Now I will say there are two products that are exfoliating that I have found just really have made a difference in my skin and I do enjoy using them on a daily basis. Now, they're repeat products, so if you've been watching my channel, I'm sorry, I've already, like, I've already shared these, but I do love them and I see a big difference. It's the Paula Choice Exfoliant um, and then this Dr. Dennis Gross like Daily Peels, which, I don't know if it's really exfoliating, but it kind of feels like it because it's like a two-step like cloth that you rub on your face. But oh my goodness, like I definitely see a huge difference in my skin's texture when I use those, but I don't feel like it really strips away the naturally occurring oils. Speaking of all of these products that we are just constantly buying and testing and praying that just will make us look better, there's a myth out there that I used to believe and I just no longer believe. And I think brands are kind of catching on to the fact that they can't trick us anymore. And that's the myth that you can just get rid of your pores because that's not gonna happen. You can, you know, slowly reduce the size of your pores and even then that can just be a stretch. Like sometimes our face just has those pores and like that's the size they're gonna be, unfortunately. You know, this says unclogs and shrinks enlarged pores. And I do think over time, my pores have kind of shrunk, but you can, to be honest, like you can still see them, like you can. And I, do you remember those Biore? There was those like facial strips that you would leave on, it would dry and then you would peel off and it'd be like all of these like spikes on on the strip and people like literally thought like, oh my gosh, those are my pores. Like I'm removing my pores. And really it was just all of the gunk and sebum and oil pulled out and then it would come right back within like an hour. I'm just here to say if you have enlarged pores, they're probably going to stay. This next myth, I could just shout from the rooftops and that is, the myth that you need an eye cream. Guys, it's a, it's just a sneaky, clever marketing scam, really, just to get you to buy more products. I'm telling you, it's like the same exact ingredients as your, all of the other moisturizing things that you put on your face. I have never, ever, ever found an eye cream that makes any lick of difference. There's one eye cream by Tarte that I, I really do like, and it's only because it makes my under eye concealer just apply better, but it does not make the skin better, the under eye dark circles better, the the wrinkles, the fine, like anything. Like I, I really, really think it's one of those unnecessary steps in your skincare routine. You're spending more money than you need to. Just use the regular, you know, facial moisturizer that you have, bring it up around your eyes, under your eyes, and you are good to go. This next myth came to me the other day because I've been actually wanting to say this in a YouTube video for so long. And I was like, oh, this video that I'm gonna film, this is perfect. So there's a myth out there that, you know, when you're doing your mascara, if you want, you know, more product on the brush or you wanna have like thicker, longer lashes, you gotta pump that mascara and then, oh, it's just better results, you know? Guys, if you are pumping your mascara, you are just pumping air and oxygen into the tube and your mascara is going to dry out so much faster. Believe me, I have, I used to do this so much and now I never do it. Like I actually am kind of sad when I have to like pull out the wand. Um, but yeah, if you just, if you just don't do that, 
your mascara will last so much longer and it really makes no difference in the thickness of your lashes. Another beauty myth that I wanted to include, and this really is personal preference, but it's more of me just putting it out there into the world as being like, this is okay to do. It's the myth that your eyebrows have to match your hair color. Now granted, mine do, because I have you know brown hair, my brows are like kind of darker and it just kind of works out that way. But there's so many blondes, redhead, just like different shades of, of hair color. And I feel like people are so just they really try to match the exact color even with the brow products that they purchase and I'm here to say like sometimes I just really think it's better to just completely not match it which sounds crazy to some people but other people I know out there are agreeing with me especially if you're a blonde sometimes darker brows just look great if you're a redhead maybe brown looks good or maybe you do want to have you know red redder toned brows it, it really I just think is a personal preference and I don't think we should be stuck to that rule so those are my 10 beauty myths that I I think women should stop believing. But again, I'm interested in knowing what you guys think. So comment down below your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing and I'll see you very soon. Bye.